Is there a possible doomsday scenario for the Florida State Seminoles football team, even if they beat Louisville on Saturday night in the ACC championship? Well, the college football playoff rankings are out, and the Knolls are fourth. You know this. ESPN and really all of their analysts, except for Greg McElroy, were begging and pleading for the Knolls to get left out because they're just not good enough without Jordan Travis. Thank God McElroy was there to try and talk some sense into him. And Boo Corrigan, the college football playoff committee chair, also echoed his thoughts. But Kirk did start out the show saying, if you're Florida State, you're four quarters away from controlling your own destiny, even without your guy. Talking about Jordan Travis. Reese added that he thought Florida State needed to look good to make an impression and still get in. And McElroy shut that down quickly by saying, I think they're perfectly fine. If they win, they're in. I don't think we need to even entertain the thought of a one-loss team jumping them. The results have to matter. Now, Kirk said something about the four best teams. And again, McElroy shut that right down. He said, it's not about the four best. It's about the most deserving. Kirk said, we need to change that. At the end of the day, I think what some of these ESPN folks want is they just want the four best teams according to the Vegas odds. Who would win if you lined them up on the field according to Vegas? Let's look at their recruiting rankings over the last few years and just play those four teams. Why play an entire schedule? Just play those four teams at the start. That's what ESPN wants. Now, there are some scenarios that we're going to go over tonight. Some would hurt FSU. Some would help FSU but we're going to talk about them. There's one scenario that's a little bit risky, but it might help FSU a little more than you think once they get into the playoff. Wait around because I want to get your thoughts and I want you to comment on that one when we get to it. But what does Florida State need? What does Florida State need to happen for them to make the playoff? Well, I'll tell you, spoiler alert. I think that if they win against Louisville, they're in. I don't care if it's by one point or 100 points. I think they're in. But are there some scenarios that worry me on Saturday? Are there some things that could shake out that would maybe make me worry a little bit about how it all goes down? I think so. I think ESPN, I think the SEC, I think the Big Ten have a lot of control. And frankly... The College Football Playoff Committee, Boo Corrigan, is saying the right things right now. Thank God for him. I think that having an NC State guy on there as the chair is a good thing for the Knowles. But aren't there some scenarios that would worry me if they did take place? If while at the tailgate Saturday, which hopefully you already have your tickets for, if not, the link is in the description. But while at the tailgate Saturday, if I'm watching football and all of these scenarios are starting to line up, that would kind of make me hope that we do have a good showing. Yeah, there are. There definitely are some scenarios that could play out that would have me worried from about midnight on Saturday night all the way until the college football playoff selection show on Sunday afternoon. What would be the first one? Well, first of all, Florida State's got to win. You can't lose the game and expect to back your way in. You lose the game, you're going to fall behind Ohio State. You're going to fall behind whoever wins the SEC. You're going to fall behind Michigan. Even if they lose their game, you'll probably follow behind whoever the Pac-12 champ is as well as they'll only have one loss and you'll be out. So you have to win your game. That's obvious. We can move on. Next up, I think it would be good for Florida State if Texas did not blow out Oklahoma State. For some reason, the College Football Playoff Committee is making these comparisons of Texas and Florida State, and they're showing their strength of schedule, and they're showing their wins against ranked opponents, and they're showing uh, their average margin of victory, and they're showing this, that, and the other, and all of those things are comparable. The only thing they're not talking about, which is frustrating and getting my blood boiling right here as I'm recording this late on a Tuesday night, is the fact that Texas has a loss and the Knowles do not. Why is that not the trump card? Why is that not what ESPN and these SEC homers are talking about in studio? Now, it clearly is the trump card for the College Football Playoff Committee who ranked the Knowles ahead of Texas. But if Texas was to go out and beat a ranked Oklahoma State team, a team that I believe is ranked around 18th, and Florida State plays a 14th ranked Louisville, if they were to beat them by 30, 40 points and really impress and the Knowles just didn't look very good, maybe escaped with a pedestrian win, could that worry me as a Seminoles fan? I mean, maybe a little. I still think the Knowles would be in. I still think the College Football Playoff Committee would do the right thing and put an undefeated Power 5 conference champion in. But the way that ESPN talks and the leverage that ESPN and the SEC have, I think there's a chance that you should be a little bit worried. So I think the number one scenario you got to hope against, you know, against, again, 
outside of Florida State losing, is Texas maybe playing a close game, not blowing out Oklahoma State. Maybe losing to Oklahoma State would be even better, but we probably aren't going to be able to be that lucky. What about the next one? Just before we go on, I want to give some love to my friends over at Rapid SEO Host. Now, Rapid SEO Host focuses on high-speed SEO-focused WordPress hosting. They're efficient, and they really offer a hands-off approach so that you don't have to be the expert. They are experts in web development and online marketing as well. If you have a website or are thinking that your website could use a tune-up or you need a new website for a new business or startup that you've got going, reach out to my friends at Rapid SEO Host. They're Knowles just like you and I are, and they will absolutely take care of you. Make sure you let them know that TJ sent you. Rapid SEO Host methods bring real results to each of their clients, and it's why they rank number one on Google for SEO hosting. I've put all of their info in the description of this video, but again, it's Rapid SEO Host. Reach out to them for all of your hosting, SEO, and website needs. I think Bama beating UGA would be bad for Florida State. There's been a lot of talk about the SEC. Oh, could the SEC get left out? Could, could they leave out uh, a 12 and one Nick Saban team who beats the number one team in the country in the SEC championship. And some people think there's a chance of that. I don't. I don't think that's happening. And that would create a problem for Florida State for a couple of reasons. One, you'd have two 12 and one SEC teams, one of them who had won the last two national championships and the other who finally dethroned them after 30 straight wins. It would worry me to have two SEC teams in that discussion. Would Georgia get dropped out? I would hope so. Would Alabama get in? I would hope not. But is there the possibility that both of those things happen and the SEC gets two teams in? Absolutely, that possibility exists. This doesn't even factor in the Texas equation. If Alabama wins the SEC and earns a spot in the playoff, let's say Georgia does drop out. What in the world do they do with Texas? Who, on Alabama's own field, in Tuscaloosa, beat the Crimson Tide? If you put Alabama in, you probably have to find a way to get Texas in as well. You can't just do one or the other. So your options are this. You either leave the SEC out completely or you put two teams in from the SEC or a team that beat the SEC. That's not good for the Knowles because we already know that Michigan's going to win their game. We're not even going to talk about that possible scenario because they will win their game by 30. Since Michigan's going to win and a Pac-12 winner is in, if you then have Alabama and Texas going in, where does that leave Florida State? Well, probably fifth. Now, do I think that happens? Probably not. I don't believe that that's the way it would go down. I think the Knowles would still be in. But would it shock you if ESPN, the SEC's main breadwinner, forced an SEC team in? No, it wouldn't shock you at all. You've watched college football for the last 20 years. You know the bias that exists. You know the way that they feel about those SEC programs, and it would not shock any of us. Now, again, I can say all of this and be confident at the same time in saying, hey, if Florida State wins, they're in. I feel good about that. But again, are there scenarios that worry me? Absolutely, and this is one of them. All right, let's talk about the one that could be a little bit risky. But again, to recap, Florida State needs to win. Oklahoma State keeps it close, maybe pulls an upset. And then just give me UGA beating Bama. There's no reason to get into that scenario of what happens if you've got two 12 and ones and then Texas, everything else. Just give me UGA to hold steady and win, which I think they will do. We'll have that game on to the tailgate. Hopefully, you'll be out there watching it with us. Lastly, and this is where it can get kind of risky, but I'll tell you my opinion. I want to hear your thoughts down in the comments. I think it would be good for the Knowles to get in the playoff if Washington went ahead and beat Oregon. Now, why is that? I think just like the Bama UGA situation, the winner of this game is probably going to be in the playoff. If Washington wins, they're a 13-0 conference champ. 
that is going to make it. There aren't the questions around Washington that there are with Florida State because of the quarterback situation. I also think that if Oregon wins, they are a 12-1 and Pac-12 champion. The Pac-12 was very good this year. Oregon's the best one-loss team that exists right now, and I think that would slide them into the playoff. But you'd have a Washington team that was 12-0 and going into the Pac-12 championship, and the precedent is there. They did it last year with TCU. Going in at 12-0 and is not a surefire eliminator. They didn't want to penalize TCU for losing to Kansas State because they said, well, they're 12-0 and in getting there made it worth it. They, they shouldn't be penalized for having to play that championship game. And so a Pac-12 team is going to be in no matter what, in my estimation. I, I can't see a scenario where that doesn't happen. But there's no reason for two of them to be considered in my guess. Why think about both Oregon and Washington when if a Washington win would happen, it gets rid of Oregon completely. It completely takes them out of the picture. And you move on. Georgia's in because they win. Michigan's in because they win. Washington's in because they win. And then Florida State's there as well. The only thing you'd really have to worry about at that point is, did Texas win by a lot? Even then, I still think the Knolls find a way to get in. The absolute doomsday scenario, besides Florida State losing, because you're obviously out, is that Texas absolutely blows out Oklahoma State. Alabama upsets Georgia in a close game. And then Oregon beats Washington by about a field goal. That creates a lot of 12-1 and teams, and all of those teams would be favored against Florida State on a neutral field without Jordan Travis, and that is worrisome. Now, would any of those teams jump FSU? I'm not sure. How many would? I don't know. But that would be a worrisome situation to me. Now, here's what could be risky but benefit the Knowles. Say Oregon does beat Washington and beats them convincingly. It knocks Washington out of the playoff, and it may just knock Florida State up to being number three. Now, I can't guarantee that. They, they may jump Oregon up to number three and leave Florida State at four after their win against Louisville. But if Florida State was to jump up to number three and get the benefit of playing Michigan in the first round, avoiding that Georgia monster that's going on right now, avoiding the Georgia monster that will have won 30-plus games in a row and just have beaten Nick Saban's Crimson Tide to eliminate him from the playoffs again, I think you'd take that trade all day. Now, it's risky again because what if that opens the door for them to leave you out with Washington getting in in your place? Something to think about, something to worry about or wonder about. But Oregon getting in and getting the fourth seed might not be the worst thing possible. I want to hear what you guys think about that down in the comments. Do you want to roll the dice? Do you want to cheer for Oregon and say, hey, they won't leave Washington in. We feel good. No big deal. Give us that three seed. Or do you want the sure thing? Because I'm telling you, the sure thing is that Bama loses, Oregon loses, and Michigan and Florida State are in because they're 13-0 as well. That's the sure thing. Do you want that? Or do you want to roll the dice a little bit? Do you want Oregon to take the win so that you can maybe have that three seed? I'd love to know what you guys think in the comments. All in all, I don't see a way that the Knolls get left out. But there are a lot of scenarios that worry me. There are a lot of scenarios where I can look at it and say, ESPN will screw us on this. And we will go to the Orange Bowl at 13-0, and we'll go win that. We'll get to 14-0, and we'll claim ourselves a fake UCF national title. Now, I don't want that to happen. I'm not asking for that to happen. I don't think that'd be good for my health if that happened. But you'd be lying to yourself if you did not think that that is a real possible reality considering who we're talking about. ESPN and SEC have been in bed together for as long as we can remember and don't think it's beneath them to screw with what our players have potentially earned. Now, here's what Florida State's got to go do. I can make all the videos. I can say all the scenario crap that I want. We, we could do this for the next four days till we're blue in the face. At 8 p.m. on Saturday night, they got to go kick butt. And they cannot leave it up to chance. They cannot leave it up to anything else. Again, I don't really think it matters if you win by one or win by 100, but just go win by 100. Take all the stress out of the game for us. There's no reason to really sweat this one. Defense has to go out and play on fire like they did last week in the second half against UF, really like they have in the second half 
all season. Offense has to probably get going a little faster than they did last week. You're not playing as bad of an opponent. You probably aren't going to come down, come back from down a couple of scores again. Not impossible, but certainly not something you want to try to do. The Knolls just have to go take care of business. They don't need to worry about what everybody else is doing. Now, for me, the guy that just yells on YouTube, yeah, I can worry about it. You, the fan, you can worry about it. You got time. You ain't got nothing else to do this week. You're thinking about what's going to happen for us to get into the playoff. But FSU just needs to go out and take care of business. FSU just needs to go out and win this game, which they're the better team. They're the more physical team. I think they have better weapons. They have a much better defense. I like Brown. They have a much better coach, though, in Tallahassee. And if they can go out and take care of business, they should be in the playoff. Your rooting guide for this weekend, you just want chaos. But not too much chaos. Give me chaos with Oklahoma State and Iowa upsetting both Texas and Michigan. And then give me chalk with UGA beating Alabama, Washington beating Oregon. Shoot, in that scenario, I think you'd be the three seed. So let's roll with that. Florida State gets in either way if they win. But I'd like to stress about it a lot less. We will have coverage of the game, the matchup, everything else this entire week. We have a preview show coming out tonight. Make sure you're locked in and subscribed when we preview Florida State and Louisville. We'll have more videos coming out through the rest of the week. And then hopefully on Sunday, we'll be talking to you about the college football playoff and Florida State's matchup in it. We thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you for watching. Come join us at the tailgate. We'll talk to you soon. Go Knowles.